Hello my Soccer Universe, final review video for this past weekend before this teeny bit of international break which actually is a little bit of welcome break to be honest for me. Now uh, as for the Serie A video if you feel that I'm a little bit distracted is because uh, Cameron is playing Comoros at the moment and I'm always looking a little bit there but I'll try to do the video now uh, to get everything done on time so they can upload overnight and you have it tomorrow morning uh what an interesting week and we had a lot of cup fights in spain we had comebacks from the madrid teams uh we had some brilliant performance by betis it was uh it was quite an exciting weekend uh, a week i have to say uh of happening there um so yeah many many headlines uh but i still chose the main headline to be because this was almost the biggest result in terms of um a title race braga with a win at sporting handing more or less uh porto the upper upper hand and i want to start in portugal um as usual because you know the portuguese league is probably the one that i watch least but i want to give it the spotlight and then we go uh to spain and yeah it was all sporting uh, against braga as I, as I say sporting actually took the lead uh, and have no idea how the referee decided they are offside before because when you see the replay yes uh pedro gonchalves is uh alone in front of the goalkeeper but it was so clearly not offside <laughs> that yeah should never have happened uh but yeah uh gives them the lead uh and sporting largely controlling the game however in the second half right after the half that it was actually a penalty game that took four minutes four minutes to check it and it was one of those yeah uh surely the players brought down in the box but um so uh but it took a while because first they looked this and then they see can we do um see it on replay they didn't have a good angle in the end it is a penalty and um galeno is actually uh converting it Sporting has pretty big chances thereafter uh, to take. They take it a hit once the the post had a mega chance right at the end of the game. But Braga was also well in the, in, in the game, and just when when when, when they thought the Sporting is really push pushing forward, it's uh, not even a counter. The ball goes into the Sporting uh, end. The ball is played out really weakly, and suddenly there are three Sporting players, uh, so, uh, one Sporting player, three Braga Braga players uh, out there free. And uh, Gobi has the ball and just takes a shot. It was not even with much conviction. He just said, okay, let, let, let me put it in the near, near corner. It went in and Braga wins that one. And together with Porto winning against Family Cow, it opens a huge gap up on top of the table. And now it is all in Porto's hand, who seem to be uh, kind of champions elect at, 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 at this moment. Uh, the question for me is now which Lisbon team will finish uh, second and go in the Champions League. Therefore, uh, I would favor Sporting. I thought they had a pretty rough January, I had to say. Benfica getting a 2 0 win at Aruca. So um, there you go in another game uh Guimaraes beating 3-1 uh uh Estoril kind of Guimaraes maybe I, I always think of Guimaraes as the fifth place team that might uh actually kind of get them back into that position uh if we look at uh the table as I said Porto now 88% sporting 7 Benfica 4 it's seems very much going into one direction there and i always say it look at just at the uh, uh, lower half in portugal where almost everyone is implicated in a relegation battle if we look at the next round i mean Sp sporting has an, a rather easier opponent with belenange uh, benfica against gil vicente that's not uh easy uh task in portugal against maritimo so uh, a few interesting ones there uh as well I think it's time to go to Spain and I would say we'll start in the Copa del Rey where we had three rather interesting ties. Uh, Ras, Ras that really didn't have much problem with Atletico Madrid who played in their anniversary jer uh, jersey. I think the 75th anniversary since they're called Atletico uh, Club de Madrid. So only Atletico, not Aviación in there. And I think they initially played in a red jer uh, jersey. It's a rather boring shirt, but I understand the historical significance of, of them but that sure didn't help at all because 
they didn't look right. And other than Janssa and then right after the half, Serloth uh, plowing through the, the defense, uh, making it 2-0 uh, to Real Sociedad, who didn't have to break a sweat. More sweat needs, needed to be broken by the big two. Um, Real Madrid against Elche. This was a really, really, really tough fight. They even go down in overtime. It was nil-nil. They go down a man, uh, Marcelo, in the one hundred second, and then a minute later, Verdu makes it one-nil for Elche. However, uh, in the second half of overtime, Isco and Eden Hazard, of all people, uh, make it two-one for Real Madrid. So huge, uh, huge work needed for Elche to move uh, to, uh, against Elche uh, that Real Madrid can move on against Elche and it was not the only time that they had trouble against Elche uh, this week and then Athletic Club uh, beat Barca in overtime 3-2 and this was a, a great cup fight with Ike Munyain. Um if you watch the goal I mean Jordi Alba to me it's he, 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 his time in Barcelona should be gone uh, I don't like, I never liked the player to begin with, but now he doesn't have to have, have, have the speed. He's, he seems to be more a defensive liability to me. And how Nico Williams just sprinted away from him. Yes, he, he always is fast. Uh, was uh, quite, quite telling. And then he, cro he crossed over Muno in, just makes a little wiggle and puts it nicely into the well. Really nice goal. However, Barcelona, despite now not playing great, they get a pretty good equalizer through Ferran Torres with nice Barcelona light like play. This was the most Barcelona goal I've seen in a long time in many ways. So uh, kudos to them. But I, Athletic Club was the better team. And in the 86 minute, when Martinez uh, gets the winner after they had already missed a few chances, uh, you really thought that this, uh, this will see Athletic Club through. No, Barcelona. They may not be a great team, however, they have loads of fighting spirit and they showed through the one Pedri in stoppage time, gets the equalizer by Dani Alves assist. I cannot believe that Dani Alves is back at Barcelona, but you know, brings uh, the necessary uh, experience. However, in overtime, uh, it took a little bit, uh, but then a penalty was given and Ike in converts that one and gives Athletic Club uh, the deserved win. Barcelona didn't look all that great. So uh, Athletic Club move on. And we have now, so whole holds out, we have now the following Samsung for Athletic Club. After Barcelona, you have to play Real Madrid. Again, Real Madrid. It's, and it's the team that they three times played really hard and three times fell short. I have to say the probably the more interesting ones are also that against Real Bet Bet Betis, two uh, interesting teams this season. And uh, how about um, Rayo against Mallorca? Also not uh, too bad. Moving from on from the Copa del Rey to the midweek, so this was round 21 fixtures, uh, where the standout was definitely Valencia against Sevilla, where uh, Sevilla took the lead through DKB own goal that Gonzalo uh, Gedesh could equalize. Sevilla largely controlling a game, but uh, Sevilla, uh, Valencia really had the fighting spirit and held onto this 1-1 one, one, uh, draw, which kind of at this moment you really had the feeling, yeah, this was the game with Sevilla wins that one. They could maybe get Real Madrid in a tight title race, but now well, breaking off a little bit. Uh, Betis before that uh, beating Alaves 4 for nil, uh, pretty big, big result, and then they follow it up uh, to start the round on Friday evening to find themselves down uh, by a goal to uh, Espanyol, uh, Raul de Tomas, who are dot, t dot, t dot, of course, but then Borja Iglesias and uh, Rodriguez uh, turn it around before the half, and then it, it was a brilliant display by Betis, I guess it. This is a, a, a absolute fun sight to watch. They might actually be the, uh, take the mantle from Real so that they might actually be at this moment the most fun sight to watch in Spain. Borja Iglesias then right after half uh, at one and William Jose in the 7 7 6 uh, kill, kill, kills of the game. Uh, against a resilient uh, Espanol side, I gotta say. Um, Another resilient side is Celta Vigo, which uh, in one of the two really bad jersey match matchups this uh, round, where uh, Sevilla in white with a little bit red against uh, Celta in the away jersey, which are red, half red, half white. I mean, more red overall. So it just about worked, but uh, when I look, look at it, it didn't look all that great. So yeah, it was not uh, uh, the best there. Celta. Sevilla 
control the game, but Celta before the half gets two really good good goals through uh, Servi and Iago Aspas, of course. Uh, but then um, Papu Gomez in 71st, he finally seems to kick in this gear that he had at Atalanta. Uh, gets uh, Sevilla back with a really, really great goal. And then uh, Oliver Torres makes it 2-2 just a few minutes later. And again, you thought maybe Sevilla can snatch the win, make it a title race, maybe, potentially. No, it's not happening. And many things went a little bit sideways, I gotta say, this uh, round, because, you know, uh, Real Madrid also couldn't get the separation. But we'll get to Real Madrid in a little bit. Uh, first, we gotta talk Atletico Madrid Valencia, which was definitely the game of the week. Despite, I think, the Athletic Club against Barbarson was really, really good, but Atletico Madrid against, against Valencia. Um, Valencia really give, uh, showing up and giving a fight, and Yunis Musa. A uh, great goal gives Valencia the lead, and then uh, Ugo Duro just before they have make makes it two 0 and you really think, yeah, this might seal the deal, and and uh, Diego Simeone will be in true trouble. However, they come back, and they come back big time. Um, Angel Correa uh, comes on, Felipe Cunha comes on, Herrera comes on, and in the sixty fourth minute, uh, Mateus Cunha makes it one two ignites the game a little bit uh, and then in stoppage time they turned around. Uh, Angel Correa gets the equalizer and then Hermoso in the 93rd gets the win and you feel that this might be a momentum turner for um, uh, for Atletico Madrid this season to get maybe uh, secure themselves a Champions League spot. I really have a feeling uh, that this may be uh, could be a turnaround because this was a huge win, huge emotion there for Atletico Madrid. Okay. So, uh, then we go to the other Madrid team who also had a comeback. I told you, Elche gave them some trouble. Elche had a 2 nil lead. And I have to say, Real Madrid had many, 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 many chances. But Elche uh, take the lead before they have with the first shot, shot, shot goal. Then uh, I think it was Vinny Jr. who could have made it 1-1-1 one, 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 and then in the 7th, 7th, suddenly it's 2-0 for, uh, for Elche against Real Madrid. However, Real Madrid come back. Uh, it's a penalty. Yeah, Benzema missed the penalty also before that. Uh, so Luka Modric takes one, uh, makes it 1-1-1-2 one, 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 and then, uh, you know, he had about 10 minutes to go in, reg in re regulation. You thought that Real Madrid will get something out there. Then it looked like that Elche could pull through. Well, she's playing in black. I didn't uh, quite quite understand myself. Um, and then um, Eda Militao gets the equalizer. So pretty big one there. Another bad jersey match of uh, Rayo against Athletic Club. The light green against white didn't look right. Uh, Athletic Club getting uh, another win. Serrano uh, there. And then, yeah, uh, that's what the disappointing nil-nil. And also disappointing was Alaves against Barcelona. Barcelona get a very, very late uh, winner through Frankie de Jong there. Okay. Uh, if you look at the next round, which is after this uh, little break, uh, we have, of course, the big one. Barcelona against Atletico Madrid. There's an appetizer Valencia against Real Sociedad. It sounds like And then Betis against Villarreal. I, I think there are really three interesting games. Uh, bang, bang, bang right after each other. And then you can watch the final of the FCON uh, to top it off. So I, I think it's interesting. Even the Monday evening game between Athletic Club and Espanyol doesn't sound all that bad. And then uh, to the bottom of the table, Getafe Levante could be a pretty huge game. Well, that was it from me from uh, the Iberian Peninsula, as I like to say. Please add anything you want in the comments below to add to this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to my channel for see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!